Hello, everybody, and welcome to a very special episode of the Loan Officer Wealth Podcast. We have Oliver Orlecki on the show. Oliver, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Awesome. So for our listeners, um, you are in the top 100 on the Scotsman's Guide. I believe today you're in around the 93 spot, which is an incredible accomplishment. Can you give us a little bit about your background, how you got into the mortgage industry? Yeah, absolutely. I started back in 2001 uh, in Tampa, Florida. I was a financial advisor for MetLife Securities at the time, cold calling orphan leads, which are essentially, unfortunately, people who pass away. They had insurance policies that they have nobody to pay the um, the premiums out to. So we call those people and try to get them to reinvest back into the MetLife suite of products. 2001, if you can remember, 9-11 happened. I was sitting in my uh, boss's office, watched the planes crash into the World Trade Center in Tampa, Florida, watched the markets fall, stock market was crashing, and was in Tampa, Florida at the time, and all of a sudden, interest rates started dropping. So they lowered rates to start spurring the economy, which started one of the greatest housing booms and busts that happened, at least in my career. So that is how I started in the mortgage industry. I was working half as much, making three times as much money. Rates were almost double digits at the time. It was the beginning of the subprime craziness when you know you were doing uh, pay option arms and you were doing all those wonderful shady products that are no longer available to us. Um, so that's how I got started in business. I started with a small little company out of Tampa. My buddy brought me over and they handed me a ruler, a pencil and a phone book and said, you're going to take the A's. And you know, literally that's how I learned. So I was cold calling. I made about 800 cold calls a week calling people, asking them if they wanted to refinance their mortgages. And that's how I got into the mortgage industry. So I came from a financial planning background. I had my series seven. I was going through my CFP certification. I was going through all these things and everybody thought the end of the world was going to happen. So I said, you know what, let's see what's going on. Rates fell and the housing market started catching on fire. And I just enjoyed the commodity of selling a mortgage versus selling whole life insurance policy, variable life insurance policy, going through that process. So that's how I migrated over. That is amazing. And what does the business look like now? Like there's something very unique about your business and the fact that you live in a completely different state than where you do all of your business. So can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. So my wife and I reside in New York City on the west side of Manhattan. We moved here in 2010. So that's even a crazier story. I was right after, if you remember the financial crisis. So my wife and I decided to pick up and go to the most expensive city in the country. And we came to New York City. Uh, my book of business is based out of Florida. I uh, relocated to Florida as a child when I was 11, 12 years old to the Tampa Bay area. And I started, you know, started, came there and went to school, University of Florida, graduated with a journalism degree. I uh, decided I didn't want to make $25,000 a year covering baseball in Abilene, Texas. So I got into the financial services industry, as stated before, and came over to the mortgage side. Uh, what's unique about us is Tim Rixner, my chief marketing and technology officer, is my right-hand man. He's actually my wife's brother. Um, he and I started a virtual company back in 2010. So when I left Florida, I owned a brokerage during the great housing boom in Florida, had 50 brokers. We were funding hundreds of millions of dollars a year. Housing market crashed, Lehman's Brothers crashed, literally overnight went from 50 employees to almost filing for bankruptcy for the company. Picked myself back up and said, you know what? I don't want to run a circus anymore. It was like running a frat house. Had some good times. It was fun, but I look back at it now and I learned a lot from it. And this is during the days where you didn't have NMLS and TRID and RESPA and all these wonderful covering agencies. So it was the Wild West. It was like that movie, The Big Short. If anybody's seen that movie, it's exactly what it was like. Um, 2010 hit, my wife and I came to New York. I had a book of business in Florida. So uh, I said to myself, let's figure this out. When this is before COVID, this is before virtual workspace. Tim and I figured out how to essentially have the presence of a company based in Tampa, Florida, while he lived in Pennsylvania and I lived in New York City and started with actually how I came into connection with you through the process down the road through Carl White and the Freedom Club and Mortgage Marketing Animals. So I was based out of the Clearwater, Tampa Bay area. Everybody, I'm sure, knows who Carl is in this uh, in this universe of the mortgage professionals. Was fortunate enough to be chosen as one of his first 30 or 40 people in the Freedom Club. And it really just opened my eyes to, you don't need to be 
in your location or your market to service your market. And I was scared out of my mind, but it was funny. The minute I made the change to come to New York City, it motivated me to work harder because you go from a place with no income taxes and lower housing expenses and costs to the most expensive city in the entire world now. So decided that we are going to figure out how to do this. Tim and I implemented Bring Central, Zoom, all these technologies that were literally just starting to burden or uh, burden from the, you know, the infancy stages of that side of things. And we were able to not only maintain our book of business, but actually grow my book of business. Instead of spending time going to closings and meeting with realtors face-to-face and getting coffees, and not that there's anything wrong with any of that stuff, but I found my time was more valuable over the phone. And that's how I built my book of business. And we literally, every year in and year out until this year, have grown pretty exponentially over time to you know, a 60, 70, $80 million book of business and hence top 100 originators in the country. Yeah, that is absolutely incredible. And I cannot recommend Carl White or the Freedom Club enough. I've just, I've lost count of the number of people that I've seen as a part of that program just completely have their lives transformed by candidly, very simple things, but done in a very specific way. So I'm interested, what would you say is the number one takeaway that you've taken away from your time in the Freedom Club that you've implemented that has just made the greatest impact? Sure. Uh, You can't do it all on your own. That is probably the number one thing. Learn to delegate and trust your team. And still to this day, 22 years in the business, I still have trust issues. I've been through the ringer a lot, but I learned through them. Put systems in place. Uh, Your database is your key to your success. You know, having a CRM, having contacts, reaching out to your clients, whether it's via, you know, now we can do everything with automation, text message, email, video chat, you name it. But, you know, it's the old school picking up the telephone and just making systematic calls on a weekly basis to your referral partners, your clients, your people in process and asking for business. And I think that's the number one thing that I can take away is, Unless you ask for the business, people aren't going to give it to you. And I probably would guess, and you know, they still to this day, all the shiny objects that are out there, all the wonderful things that are going on with AI and all these wonderful advertising platforms. Literally, I tell people I need a phone and a computer to do my job. And I call my phone and my computer, my ATM, and I dictate how much money I want to make by how many phone calls I make. I could not agree with you more. And it's funny. So Carl and I just partnered together. on saw that. Yeah, so loan, loan officer CRM.ai, and we also have the AI inner circle. Um, and what we've done is we've been working behind the scenes. This is the first time I've actually publicly talked about this. Um, but what we did was we partnered together and we took all his systems that they have inside the mortgage marketing animals and the Freedom Club. So calling the database calls, the pre approved and lookings, the qualified agent list. And we now have all the emails and the text messages and everything are pre programmed inside that CRM. Wow. But, and we bolted a power dialer onto the top of it. So you can load your calls in, use the power dialer, but the power dialer is smart enough to see who you talked to and who you didn't. And if you didn't talk to them, it automatically drops them into a sequence and sends the follow up emails and sends the text messages. But the crazy thing is, if somebody responds, we've built the back end of it with OpenAI. So the responses actually go to OpenAI. Chat GPT writes the response to the person that has responded back to you and you just get a message, either an email or a text. And it's like, this is what the client said. This is what chat GPT said. Do you approve it? And you just wow. click yes. And it sends the message out to them. So that's incredible. It's crazy. It's, it's unbelievable. So we'll make, make sure you pitch that to Tim. Cause we are in the process of, <laughs> I'm not joking with you. Make sure you pitch that to Tim. We're in the process and, you know, we'll get into how you and I met and what you've done for our business personally. But, uh, it's interesting, you know, part of our database calls, when I speak to agents, the resounding number one thing that I think that is lacking in 90% of these agents, and these are agents that are doing 30, 40, 50 million dollars in sale are CRMs and database calls. Um, As much as I love all my referral partners, it blows my mind that they don't have a systematic approach on how to reach out to their customers. I've seen everything from Google Notes to Excel spreadsheets to literally old school handwritten books where they check off and they put a Z for a Zillow lead or they put an X for this lead. And it just, it's, it's resounding to me. And it's crazy to me that these people don't touch 
and part of our system, you know, and what we've built out with our database management is yearly reminders and anniversaries and kids' birthdays and holidays. And our agents get that information so they can proactively reach out and wish their clients happy birthday. And I'll call my my agents in the morning and say, hey, listen, it's Chris's birthday. Call me, wish him happy birthday. And you would be shocked at how many people we are the first person that wishes them happy birthday quicker than their spouses wish them happy birthday, quicker than their kids wish them happy birthday, quicker than their bosses or their employees. So it's always, and it's such an easy, warm call to make because who doesn't want to hear happy birthday? But I am 100% serious because we're going through growing pains with our CRM. You know, we have a seven, 8,000 person database now we built up over this time. And I'll be 100% honest with you. A lot of the technology is out there now. I'm not acclimated to it. That's why I have a guy like Tim who works hand in hand with me. So I think what you're doing is incredible. And I would seriously love to further explore that. And we can, you know, I'll have Tim talk with you offline. I'm sure he's probably well-versed in it already. Yeah. So congratulations. Definitely. That's amazing. Oh, thank you. Um, so you dropped two golden nuggets, which I think are the fundamentals, but that a lot of people in the mortgage industry gloss over because they're going after the shiny object. So it's loanofficercrm.ai. I know we're going to get a bunch of people that are going to go check that out because that's a shiny object. But what it's doing is it's going back and making you do the fundamentals, like make the phone calls to your database, make the phone calls to your pre-approved agents. So talk to me about your database marketing, because I'm assuming you pick up from Florida, you go to New York, you go back, you use the mortgage marketing animal system to work the database in Florida. And that's how you've been able to maintain and grow that book of business there. Is that right? Yeah. So I took the time, energy and effort. It was it was, uh, you know, just like anything else over time, you fine tune it, fine tune it. And without Tim, my right hand man, I couldn't be in the place I'm at right now. We have set up, we, we put together, um, we hired a copywriter to do a lot of our follow up stuff from a you know perspective. Now we're using AI to write a lot of that stuff. But the date, yeah, the database management for me is key. I would say. 60% of my business probably comes from either repeat customers or referrals from my client database. You don't see my name on park benches. I don't do 10,000 mailers. I don't spend tens of thousands of dollars on Zillow, Realtor.com. We have organically grown and now we have an amazing reputation and we just took the time, energy and effort to really build out our database and we pound the hell out of it. I mean, we we call it being pleasantly persistent. Uh, we have a lot of clients of ours that absolutely love it and we have some clients that are like, this is too much and some agents absolutely love it and some dial it back. And what's nice about technology, just like anything else, is you can fine tune it to exactly how much or how little somebody wants to be communicated with. But I think the key to how we really built it is I don't just look at my clients as a bang them over the head one time transaction. So many people do. So many people are short sighted. Uh, this is, you know, the saying is it's a marathon, not a race. And it's so true. You know, my clients are clients that I financed their first house 20 years ago. They now have kids that are graduating college is crazy enough. And they're calling me to buy their house. And the people who bought that house and they were having the kids are now downsizing to buy another house or they're buying the retirement homes. And that's how we've grown our book of business. And, and we've used our database as it, it, it's, it's golden. And when you have the ability to go in there and sort and be able to do it. And thanks to Tim, you know, I can go in and pull anything from interest rates to loan type to years it was closed to now we're getting really specific and we're building out a more of like a restaurant hospitality concierge where we're doing what kind of sports teams they like, what kind of dogs they have, what's their hobbies. Because when you can interact with somebody and I train my staff, the first two minutes conversation has nothing to do with mortgages. I don't talk money. I don't talk mortgages. I don't talk credit scores. I don't talk interest rates. I hear a dog barking in the back. What kind of dog do you have? I hear a kid screaming in the back. How's your kid? I hear a sports event in the background. Who's your team? And now we're starting to log all that information so that when I make that next call during football season and I'm saying, hey, on Turkey Day, are you going to watch your beloved Lions play on Thursday? You're going to have somebody that's going to open up to you as opposed to Joe Blow. It's like, hey, I've got this, you know, two for one temporary buy down or whatever it is that's out there. Ninety five percent financing on a two to four unit. It's a much softer, easier phone call. It's a lot less salesy and it's building rapport. Yeah, I could not agree more. You know, people oftentimes the first transaction, it'll be product and service. But after that, it's relationship. 
And that's so key to building the database. So your typical, the person that's in the database that's getting the majority of the messages, how often are you reaching out to the database? We reach them, whether it's phone calls, text message, or email, at least 12 times a year. Okay. So we are hitting them at least 12 times a year. Um, we have, depends upon what's going on, where we always hit them up on their birthday. Yep. We always hit them up on their yearly mortgage review. We make outbound phone calls during tax time. I'm a Florida-based company, so we typically call them at the middle of October to let them know taxes are coming out. Um, the end of the year is a great time to pick up the phone, let them know they filed for their homestead exemption if they bought a home. Yep. Uh, we have a lot of, you know, we use a lot of our referral partners from other industries, financial planning, tax consulting, insurance, to give those opportunities, have you talk to a financial advisor about how to do this and how to defer the taxes and so forth. So we probably reach out, I would say, eight to 12 times a year pretty consistently. And like I said earlier, so many people, they, they don't get reached out to as often as they want to. And I think people just want to be heard and felt. And when you do a transaction with them, you know, listen, we live in a high margin business. We make great money for what we do. We make more money than, you know, Carl says this all the time. We make more money than football players, doctors, attorneys, and we don't have to go through going on a field and practicing for three hours a day or going through eight hours of school, you know, eight, eight years of uh, a professional school and putting yourself in hundreds of thousands of dollars of debts. We have a very unique opportunity of what we do. And it is relationship based business and the more relationships you build, the more people you touch. It's a contact sport, the more money you're going to make. It's that simple. No, a hundred percent. And one of the things that you said there that I absolutely love is you have a reason for reaching out every single time. Hey, 100%. A financial planner, have you talked to an investment advisor? It's not just like, oh, hey, I'm your mortgage. Like so many people don't reach out to their database because they don't know what to say. But there's a tremendous amount of opportunity if you're willing to look for it and even ask AI, hey, what's a good reason to reach out to my database? So, and, and that is what we are doing. And I'll be the first to tell you, I am not the best, you know, I've been consistent and not consistent with my, with my phone calls and my team, my wife is my business partner, Tim, are always on top of me. And they say, pick up that ATM. That's what they say. Pick up the ATM and make the calls. And as believe it or not, you know, you try to try to do all these other things in your day, whether it's helping, you know, putting out fires or helping your process or taking income docs, whatever it is. But the money is really made in a two to three hour time of your day where you're just literally talking to customers. And the biggest thing is so many people don't ask for business. It's, you know, let's get this transaction done. It's a simple, hey, who do you know is looking to buy, sell, or refinance? And I've learned that from Carl. You will, people feel obligated to give you names. It, it's as crazy as it sounds. It's psychological as it sounds. But the more you choose people, the more people are willing to give you that, the better experience you have, the more better experience their friends, family, colleagues, bosses, you name it, are going to have as well. Yeah, absolutely. And so tying into the database a little bit, we are working together on our SEO program. So can you give the listeners like an outline of what that is? Yeah, of course. So we found gold years ago and when Zillow first came out, this is before anybody knew what Zillow was, that reviews were going to be a thing of the future. So my, my claim to fame through the Freedom Club and I guess in the industry now is I'm the guy that lives in New York that has a Florida book of business that consistently closes a lot of loans. And I was known as the Zillow guy. And when Zillow first came out, Zillow's platform was free. You didn't have to pay for advertising. You didn't have to do anything. So you put up a little resume about yourself and literally it's a reason to pick up the call and ask your clients to leave your reviews. And that's what started our review gathering process. And as that started turning from a snowflake into a snowball and it started growing, growing. We're now over 350 Zillow reviews. And to jump into how you're helping us, Google is now my new Zillow. You know, a lot of people hear the Zillow word, don't feed the Zillow beast. I'm impartial to it. I've made a lot of money with Zillow. I've spent a lot of money with Zillow. There's a lot of things they do great. There's a lot of things they don't. But Google to me is the, it's not the new wave. It's been the wave. If you can take advantage of what's going on with Google, you're going to put yourself in an ideal situation. So we have really focused our energy on Google. And with your help, we're over 250 Google reviews and the geo-targeting and all those wonderful things. We probably produce 10 to 12 organic leads a month by not spending a dime to do it, by not doing anything that we're not paying pay-per-click, we're not paying for space. I think now with your assistance, I am now the number two ranked 
mortgage professional in the Tampa Bay area, and I'm talking people that are working for the big guys, the cross country mortgages, the fairways that have much deeper pockets. I own my own brokerage, just so everybody knows. It's a small little boutique firm, and everything that I spend comes out of my pocket, out of my corporate uh, expense account. So when Tim came to me with your idea, it has been a instrumental foundation of how we built our business over the past whatever six to 12 months and now that you've incorporated this ai into it just to see what tim does and he geeks out on it i'm completely not in that realm i'm a sales guy when it comes to technology i go tim he says should i do this this like i said whatever you and chris are doing 100 percent. i met you god i think it was in vegas in 2000 like seven or eight years ago it was the first time i ever met you and you did your one of your first presentations in front of the freedom club you've been with the freedom club for you know in that group of people promoting your products for years and i remember sitting here going wow i have absolutely no idea what he's talking about but i'm gonna get tim on the phone with this guy immediately and that's where you guys started hitting it off and we have really seen it take off in the past six months in a slow market right now the first thing people do, you know, it's called social and online cloud, social presence and online cloud, you know, just like anybody else, you go out to a restaurant, you look for a tailor, a haircut person, a mortgage professional, a realtor, what's the first thing you're going to do? You're going to get a name or you're going to Google Tampa mortgage guy, or you're going to Google whatever it is. It comes up when you see 250 five-star reviews, 350 Google re or Zilla reviews, Facebook reviews. Now all of a sudden you have that people can then start clicking around. They see your lifestyle. They see that I'm living in New York and I like, you know, the giants even though are terrible this year, or I'm a food guy, or I have a dog or don't have a dog. People immediately start affiliating themselves with you. And it's just so much easier. So we get so many people that literally call us now and say, your online presence is incredible. I don't want to work with, I'm not going to name the big name banks. So, and so, and so, and so. I want somebody that's going to, you know, be a little bit more bespoke, a little bit more concierge like, and that's how we've gained a lot of market share in this business. And a lot of realtors love it because the realtors see it and they ask us, how do we do this? Yeah. So for me, it is a value add to show somebody how to set this up. And Tim and I, and my wife have spent a lot of time recruiting agents, helping them set up their Google business pages, helping them set up their Zillow pages. And literally giving them a reason to pick up the phone and call and ask their clients for reviews. And when you get a call from an agent that says, hey, because you helped me set up my Google page two years ago, I'm now at 80, 90 reviews. I closed four to five deals. I made another $80,000 in revenue. How can you not ask for that business? It's, it's too simple. Yeah, I could not agree more. And for some of you that may be hearing this for the first time, so what we're talking about is if you go to your phone and you just type in mortgage lender, Google is going to show you a map on the front page of the search with the ratings and reviews of three businesses in the local marketplace. And so our AI powered SEO program is we know how to bump the large companies out of those spaces and use AI to put our customers in there. And that's what we've done with Oliver, but it's a team effort because Oliver is allowing us to reach out to his database to help generate those five-star ratings and reviews. The ranking is one thing, but if you don't have the reviews, the phone doesn't ring. And that's right. really what it's about. It's the combination of the reviews and the ranking. And so you're in a ridiculously competitive market. Like you're in Tampa, right? Yeah, probably one of the hottest housing markets in the, in the country now. And uh, you know, it used to be pharmaceutical reps, realtors, and mortgage professionals were the only three people that were employed in the entire state of Florida and more specifically Tampa, Florida. So competition is thick. I'm not from a small town. We don't service a small town market. I, I don't even know. I, it's funny. I go to the, you know, when I used to go to the Freedom Club events, the amount of people I would meet that were in my backyard, it was just overwhelming to me. I was like, this is nuts. We're all in the same place. And there's just so much business out there that it really doesn't even matter. And so many of those people, you know, Carl could keep all of his little tokens of knowledge in his own thing. He owns his own branch of the company. He can keep all of it and not share his success. And that was one of the cool things is that everybody shared. But yes, to be able to be ranked ahead of some of these cross country people, the big box banks, you name it, it's incredible. And we get, again, 10 to 12 calls a month easily on that. And all we're doing, it gives me, it's a cool thing. Part of my database management is, like you said, we have a pipeline that literally tracks review received or review requested. I will reach out to that customer. We have short links embedded. 
And what's cool now is with AI, you could literally have AI write a three paragraph or two paragraph or five line review for you, cut and paste it, throw it up in there. As long as Google doesn't tag that as AI, they will post it. And it's incredible how many reviews we've gotten in the past year. And it's just, it makes it easier for us to reach out and ask. And I just don't ask for reviews on Google. We go on Zillow and all of our platforms, but Google is where we're focusing on our energy with your help. Yep. And so um, for everybody listening, um, you can go to AISEO.ConnectionIncorporated.com. So that's AISEO.ConnectionIncorporated.com uh, to get more details on that program. You can also uh, email support at ConnectionIncorporated.com and we'll get you more information on that. Now, Oliver, I'm interested in, like you mentioned, 10 to 15 you know, qualified leads per month. Um, when you get an inbound phone call from Google, who's on, who's on the other end? Is it rate shoppers? It's like, how many of those would you say you actually turn into closed funded deals? I would probably say we're at about a 20% close rate, which is incredible for internet leads. You, you and I both know this, you being in the business, you know, I used to spend five figures a month on Zillow leads, you're lucky and you are killing the curve if you're close at three to 5%, right? And we were closing about seven to 8% and then they started tweaking their algorithms and we saw the writing on the wall and, you know, Google started, or Zillow started just not giving as much good data to guys like me. They had their internal mortgage teams and so forth. So we decided on Google. It's not, it, it's interesting. It's not just rate shoppers. Yes, we get the guy that says, hey, what's your rate? You know, first thing, you know, even say hello to him, hey, what's your rate? And, you know, that's not my client. You want a rate, go, you know, go to a bankrate.com, go to Lending Tree. Those are your guys that are going to do those loans for bottom of the barrel stuff. But that experience is also typically, just like anything else, a budget experience. Most of these people come to us. We get a lot of people that are moving from out of town. We get a lot of new construction people. It seems to be a big one right now because a lot of people are getting fed up with the um, with the builders, lenders, and how they're being tugged around and how they're not able to get in touch with them. Or we get a lot of fallouts. We're, we do a lot of rescue loans where people are two weeks in the contract. You know, their brother's friend, who's the mortgage guy, doesn't have the experience we do, doesn't have the uh, knowledge that we do, didn't know this guideline, didn't know this program existed. And, you know, being on the broker side, we've got autonomy to send our deals to 50, 60 different investors. We're able to pick up that business. So I would probably say I have 15 to 20% of our Google leads that are coming in right now. We're closing them. And it's it's high quality stuff. And it's great because it's just helping us build our database. Can we help everybody? No, but it, it's interesting we have, with your help, you actually started getting us into that luxury market. So we're actually, we're, we got a customer now that's actually shopping. He's looking at two to $3 million properties. He found us on Google and I asked him, and then we asked him, how did you search? And he typed in luxury mortgage professional. And that's how he came up. And with your tweaking and Tim's, you know, knowledge, we're now capturing that audience. We close more than those deals that pays for our services for a year and then some. So it's it, it, the ROI is incredible. It's the best ROI that I've worked with in quite some time. And if I can close that percentage of it, and I know the more leads that we get and the more ratings we get and the more people that go through the algorithm, it's just going to increase our, our breadth of it. And we're, we're using that, you know, now we're adding it's taken me years, but now we're adding the social components. We're doing YouTube videos. We're doing all those things to just get more and more people to build our brand. And that's, you know, my team's focus now. Everybody can sell mortgages. It's a brand now. We're not just, you know, your Licky group. We're a brand where people know us, they trust us, and they know that they're going to get a white glove experience from beginning to end. That is amazing. That is That is so incredible. And I wanted to touch on just, just one thing here, because I think that you might be able to just absolutely crush this. So this episode is, is longer than, uh, than we typically do. And thank you All for good. being generous with your time. Um, we've got a strategy that we've started implementing with some of the people that we have in the AI inner circle, and it's called the show. And I know how, well, so for what we're doing is we're creating like an interview process. Nice. It becomes a show. So it's a podcast, but it's a YouTube show and it does all your shorts, all your social media, all that stuff. Sorry. <coughs> Excuse me. And so what we're doing is we're using it as a hook 
to get top performing referral partners in the market on the show so that you build the relationship with them because we reach out to qualified agents all day long. If it's just like, hey, I'd like a coffee appointment, it's hard to get them to show up. But when it's a podcast or it's a show, oh, yeah. far more of them actually show up. So you can actually get far more appointments and referrals and referral relationships. But then what it does is we take it, we put it into an AI tool. And this is something for me to chat with Tim about, but you do the interviews. You interview the agents and I'm talking realtors, financial planners, investment advisors, that your insurance guys, all of them. You interview them on Zoom, just like this. And then there's a tool where you load them in, it chops up all the shorts and the snippets and the reels and all that good stuff. You then send that out to them and they post it on their social media. So they're endorsing you on their social media and you send them an email that's written by ChatGPT so they can send it out to their database. Wow. So your content gets endorsed on the database. And you've done a phenomenal job with your social content. I think if you add that, that short little strategy to it, you just take your content to the next level. It would just like blow up. It's funny you mentioned that the timeliness of it. We did not, for full disclosure, we did not discuss any of this beforehand. <laughs> we are now doing our planning. We've been doing our planning for 2024. And my wife's launching a podcast this week, actually completely different from the Morgan world. She's my business partner, but she's launching a spiritual and energetic podcast, which is going to be incredible, called The Space Between. She's super excited. It gets launched tomorrow. She's been putting a ton of effort. But from my perspective, that is actually one of the things I want to do. I actually enjoy this kind of forum a lot. And I think that you're a hundred percent right. And listen, there's nothing wrong with asking for coffee and learning how they do their business, but we're, I, I, we're in a place now where I, I coined this phrase as the modern loan officer. You're no longer the old school loan officer. You have to be on social. You have to be on YouTube. You have to be on Instagram. You have to be on TikTok and interviewing people, interviewing industry, Titans industry, you know, people, high producing agents, financial planners, all your referral partners. It is an awesome way to do it. So one of the things that I've been really focusing on my team and we went out, we bought the fancy microphone, we're getting the camera, my wife's getting the whole setup. So we're going to have a nice setup where not only I can do it in person, but I can also do the virtual technology and what's beautiful about it is like you're doing with me, you're based out of, you said, you know, you're in a way North than I am. I'm in New York city. The fact that we can get on a phone call here, talk face to face, shoot the stuff back and forth and talk about how to grow each other's business is incredible. And I think there's so many agents out there that are dying for something like that. And I think it is an awesome value add and I'm a hundred percent on board with it. The fact that you just mentioned that just reinforces to me how important that needs to be. Listen, you can do videos. It's awesome. You can do content. It's awesome. But I think this platform and this forum and just having people talk is going to captivate more people because you're not just seeing a five or seven, 10 second reel, or you're not talking about industry specific stuff. You know, you go on your Facebook or Instagram now, it's, oh, hey, you know, 95%, two to four units and everybody's reposting the same thing. It's the same content being redone over and over and over again. What this gives you is it gives you authenticity. You get to actually learn the person behind the picture you get to learn about them and you got to learn about their business so i think it's an awesome awesome idea so kudos to you for being on the forefront of that that's awesome well we can't help uh and wait we can't wait to help you guys step in oh uh, i'm super excited i mean the minute i hang up this call i got a bunch of stuff i talked to tim i said he's pinging me now I, he goes how's it going and i'm like the minute i'm off this call him and i are going to be i'm just downloading all this as soon as i can because there is some gold in this conversation right now that is awesome. Well, thank you for bringing the value. Thank you for being so generous with your time. Congratulations on your success. And we are just, we're going to keep going from here. So Oliver, thank you for your time. How do people find out more about you? How do they reach out to you? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, my name is Oliver Orlicky. I'm the team lead owner of the Orlicky Group. You can reach us at info at orlickygroup.com. And that's O-R-L. I C K I the word group.com or you can call us at any time 813-302-1616. We're not your nine to five guy. We're available after hours on weekends. You get the opportunity to talk with myself, my lovely wife. And yeah, that's the best way. And then all of our socials across the board. You can find me on Oliver or Licky. You can go to Instagram, look up the Orlicky group or on Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, Twitter. 
we're about to add our TikTok. So yeah, we're, 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 we're going uh, knee deep into it, diving into head first. And I love all your ideas and wanted to thank you for helping us grow our business. Um, you know, I'll, I'll look back at my numbers of 2023 and it's one of the hardest years we've ever been in, but with your, you know, ability to help me close that extra eight to 10 to 12 deals, that's a nice way to add some supplemental income in a down market. And, you know, right now we're reinvesting in guys like you to help us grow that because I see the value in it and I see what you guys are doing. And it's incredible what technology is doing to our business. And it's uh, the quicker you get in and the faster you get in, the quicker you're going to adapt to it, and the quicker you're going to be able to monetize it. And, you know, thankful for guys like you, thankful for Tim Rixner on my team, the amount of people he's helped on his side. And we're, we want to bring this to the agents. And I think you have nuggets of gold here that not only can benefit mortgage professionals, but I certainly would advise you to start going after real estate agents as well, because it's a very similar thing. And there are so many agents yearning out there for this kind of assistance. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you, Oliver. And thank you as well. Me, Seth. And thank you for listening. We'll see you on the next episode. And for those of you that are interested in that AI SEO program, AISEO.connectionincorporated.com, or you can email support at connectionincorporated.com, and we'll get you all the information that you need. Again, Oliver, thank you for being on the show. Take care, Chris. Pleasure is mine.